Thank you, Dominique. As you can see, you can download the slides, and um, we're going to be asking some poll questions today. I want to talk about poll questions real quick as we get started here. These poll questions are really aimed to gauge how much you're using uh, the cybersecurity products here at CDSE and to give us an idea on uh, if our products are meeting the mark. So please uh, use these poll questions, and then we'll uh, discuss some of the results. So the question is, how often do you visit the CDSE website for cybersecurity training and resources? I'm seeing a lot of once a month. Okay, that's not bad. Um, one of the products we have out on the CDSE website are our cybersecurity toolkits. Uh, these toolkits are often changed more than once a month uh, with new content or uh, additional content and best practices, tools, templates, and that kind of stuff. So while a once a month visit is pretty good, um, if you come back more often, you'll have a better chance at seeing that updated, updated content uh, for yourself. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, the cybersecurity training we have available. Information Security and the National Industrial Security Program, our Cybersecurity Awareness Offers, System Management, Auditing and Continuous Monitoring, Incident Response, and Alternative Platform Devices. These are the topics or the general headings that make up the cybersecurity offerings here at CDSE. So the second question here, have you ever completed the Information Security in the NISP curriculum? This is the e-learning curriculum we're talking about, um, not the instructor-led training, which was recently discontinued. I'll give you a minute to fill that out. All right, it looks like uh, Roughly a little bit more than half, almost 60% have completed the, uh, the training. Um, for the other half that haven't, I mean, it may not apply to your job directly, but uh, if you're an information system security manager or, or an information system security officer, it, it absolutely applies, especially if you're in the contracting field um, with DSS coming in as your cognizant security agency. Some of the courses within the information security in the NIST curriculum are Introduction to the NIST CNA Process Course. This is a course that um, really provides why and how DSS does the certification and accreditation process. So those of you out there that might not have completed this curriculum because you're a facility security officer or you're a security specialist, this is still a course that could apply and provide a lot of value for you, even though you may not need the rest of the courses in this curriculum, because you may only need an understanding of what the CNA process is and not how to uh, walk through the process and how to implement the technical CNA requirements as we learn further down. The second course, as I said, is a walkthrough. It takes you how, through how to get your system certified and accredited under DSS standards, under NISPOM standards. The third course is the technical implementation of those standards. Now, technical implementation can mean many things for, uh, depending on what operating system you're on. We focus on Windows in this course, as well as a little bit of Linux. The technical implementation of CNA virtual environment, the last item there, is actually probably the best thing on this list for you. If you have a new system or you have new requirements, this virtual environment allows you to go in and practice those settings uh, on a computer in an environment of non-attribution or non-retribution. If you can make mistakes and you're not on a live system, this is a great practice area um, and, it, and it is in fact underutilized uh, because I think a lot of people probably don't know that it exists or it hasn't worked uh, properly once. But I would encourage you to check it out because it really is a great resource out there to practice those technical implementation settings, whether you're under DSS requirements or not, you can still use it. Here's the web page, as we talked about, for the curriculum. It, it provides students with an introduction to the security requirements for safeguarding classified information. This is under the NIST program. This is CNA for DSS requirements. However, if you are a DOD security professional out there, as I said, there is still some value in this curriculum, and I would encourage you to at least uh, look at it. And maybe even if it's only the virtual environment that you get something out of, I would encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and use that resource because it's, it's here for everybody. 
All right, the next poll question we have. How many cybersecurity courses have you taken here at CDSE? All right, we got some good responses coming in. So it looks like we have a lot of responses in the one and two categories. I would be willing to bet that that's probably the either the Cyber Awareness Challenge course that you've taken or the Cyber Security Awareness course that you've taken from an awareness perspective. Uh, the Cyber Awareness Challenge, of course, being the uh, DOD annual requirement, as well as uh, the Cyber Security Awareness being a, a course that's used widely in our industry uh, partners. So let me, let me talk about the Cyber Awareness Challenge and the Cyber Security Awareness for just a second. Let's say that you're not an ISSM. You're not a person that's you know, working on cybersecurity or even information insurance on a daily basis. Uh, but you are required uh, to you know, educate your users and perform some of those security functions. We've had a lot of organizations come into CDSE and use our cybersecurity awareness products or the Cyber Awareness Challenge as their annual cybersecurity training for their users because it talks about things uh, like phishing and data spills and different uh, methods of hacking and malicious code. And it provides the, even general users with a very good uh, awareness level that they can take and turn into uh, in things like increased reporting at your facility and at your organization. So they provide a lot of good value uh, for normal folks, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to be cybersecurity professionals or IT professionals or even you know, a regular security professional. The next course on that list that I want to talk about is the Cyber Protect. Uh, we talked a little bit about the technical implementation of CNA in the virtual environment. Cyber Protect is, is along that same line as it's a scenario-based training uh, that you get to take and you essentially experiment with and figure out how to protect the network. Now you have funding limits and resource limits to protect that network. If we had all the funding in the world, we could we could make absolutely the most some of the most secure networks that we that are possible. The problem is none of us uh, you know usually work in an environment with unlimited funding. Next course on there is the information assurance and computer network defense information sharing. This is a course about how information sharing can be helpful in the community. Next, we have the phishing awareness course. This is another course like cybersecurity awareness that is really good for uh, not only cybersecurity professionals, um, but also your general users. And it's, it's good because oftentimes general users are being phished and they really you know, don't know. They might know from you know, reading the news or reading your emails as a security professional that they understand what phishing is, but they don't understand some of the intricacies. That phishing awareness course uh, provides a lot of great details and cases of phishing and can be of a real value to your organization. The next two we have are portable electronic devices, removable storage media, and smartphones and tablets. These courses cover uh, things like policies, best practices when it comes to portable electronic devices, USB drives, thumb drives, uh, smartphones and tablets, and really try to uh, just raise the awareness from uh, not only a management of those devices point of view, but also a user perspective. The last item on the list here is a social networking, a short. Uh, this is a, a short is, again, 15 minutes or less training that you don't have to log into STEP, um, which is our learning management system. You can merely send out the link to the social networking short, and it can provide a good level of awareness, again, for those general users that don't have um, that cybersecurity or that information technology background. On to the next poll here. How many of you out there have responsibilities for auditing or monitoring your networks? All right, so I'm seeing that the, I guess the, the vast majority, almost 90% of you, um, do not have responsibilities for auditing your networks. Now, some of you do and some of you don't, obviously. A large portion of you don't. Um, oftentimes, those can be farmed out to uh, whether it's system administrators or special um, additional duties uh, assigned for auditing personnel. And um, you may not have uh, direct 
responsibility to do those audits. But oftentimes what happens is as a, you know, as a security manager or as an information system security manager, uh, whether you're on the contracting side or whether you're on the, the DOD side, um, <clears throat> those responsibilities, even though they're being performed by somebody else, uh, could ultimately lead back to you because it's uh, you're in charge of safeguarding the system or you're in charge of safeguarding that particular facility. So while you may not be doing those duties on a regular basis, it's really good to know some of the things that go along with auditing and continuous monitoring. First course up here, first two courses up here on this list talk about the DOD Intrusion Detection System, that's what IDS stands for, Analysis, uh, Parts 1 and 2. These courses go over what an IDS is and how to interpret some of the data. Again, this is going to be a small class of you out there that are actually doing this task, but it's good to understand the, the fundamentals behind it um, because of your role in the organization as a security officer or as a, an information system security officer. Next course is phishing awareness. We talked about that already um, in the awareness level, but this is really what it comes into that continuous monitoring an auditing section. If you have, you know, general users uh, all of a sudden doing things that, you know, aren't um, characteristic of their position or their personality, um, there may they may have gotten fished. Their account may not be theirs anymore, or theirs their account may not be theirs alone anymore. They might be sharing it with an unknown party. And while they didn't do it on purpose, it's still happening. And the only way that we can catch this is by auditing and, and through other continuous monitoring like intrusion detection systems. Other courses here that tie in the, and into the same topic are the portable electronic devices, that removal of storage media, um, you know, do you allow thumb drives in your organization, uh, what kind of portable electronic devices could be brought into your areas, plugged into your computers. Um, all that ties into that continuous monitoring uh, point of view where you're really looking at the system um, from that wholesale continuous action. You want to make sure that nothing gets plugged into it, uh, configuration stays the same, so on and so forth. Next course here we have is the privileged user information assurance responsibilities. Oftentimes, uh, privileged users are uh, the ones uh, essentially with the keys to the kingdom. They have rights and permissions to get to anywhere they want, uh, whether it's data, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, computer settings, computer security settings, and it's, under, it's, it's very good to have them understand, you know, what their responsibilities are. Um, a lot of organizations have your privileged users um, sign a, a form that says, you know, I am a privileged user and here are my responsibilities. But Reading a form and taking an e-learning class where it goes over those responsibilities are, are two completely different things. And I would ensure, or I would encourage you that if you have privileged users out there, that you get them to take uh, this type of training um, because it really opens their eyes up and says, yes, you're right, I absolutely have permissions to do that, and I need to make make sure uh, that I'm not you know, inadvertently doing something of that nature, and that, you know, my peers and my other coworkers that are privileged users, um, you know, fall into that, uh, you know, under that web. The last thing I want to talk about, privileged users, we often think that privileged users are only system administrators or network administrators. Uh, depending on the type of system, you could have a privileged user um, that just has one elevated privilege. All of a sudden, that person is now a privileged user because they can do something that the normal general user population can't. And they need to understand those responsibilities. So while this particular training, the privileged user IA responsibilities, may be overboard for a general user that just has a couple of elevated privileges, uh, it's important to note that you need to think about these things and, and have a greater sense of where and what users have permissions on your networks. Smartphones and tablets, auditing and continuous monitoring. Again, what do we access off of our smartphones and tablets? Uh, we access information. Is it company information? Is it government information? You need to know what's being accessed through those different mobile devices. Lastly here is the introduction to the Risk Management Framework, or RMF. Uh, this is recently put out last year as a requirement under the Department of Defense. It hasn't been made a requirement for our industry partners yet. Um, while it may be coming in, in the future, uh, there's, no, you know, there's no requirement for you to fall under RMF. But this introduction class 
goes through you know where we were before with what they called DIACAF, which was the DOD Information Assurance Certification and Accreditation Program, and how we are moving from different segmented certification and accreditation programs to one risk management framework um, in the DOD and how that helps, especially when it comes to auditing and continuous monitoring. All right, next poll question here. Do you have responsibilities as a system administrator or are you a privileged user? I'll give you just a second to answer that. All right, so it looks like we have uh, maybe a little bit more of uh, that that ratio. Not as not as many of you are saying no as you said for auditing, uh, but still a, a great portion of you um, are not a system administrator, nor are you a privileged user, and th and that's okay. Frankly, um, there's a lot of users out there that have security responsibilities in whether it's certification and accreditation or as a security professional for that organization that are not going to have system administrator or privileged user uh, roles within the information systems. However, that being said, you need to know or you need to have an understanding of what those privileged users and what those system administrators are doing. Um, some of the training that we have available, some we call it system management training, as we talked about, information assurance, computer network defense, um, how that information flows back and forth, how sharing that information can be of great value, uh, the cyber protect uh, scenario. I would encourage you, even if you even if you're not responsible for say building systems, that you check out cyber protect because it really is, uh, you know, from an organizational point of view of how do I protect this network and it can really open your eyes and, and provide a lot of great insight um, and maybe uh, you know help open the doors or ease the translation uh, from you know computer talk to security talk. Again we have the introduction to intrusion dis detection systems part one and two. Um, this is how we manage our systems. This is how we detect intrusions. Um, so if, you are, if you're a system administrator, maybe you're not a system administrator that's in charge of I, your IDS. But again, this is good informational knowledge that you need to know how your networks work. Because if you know a greater understanding of your networks, the better chance you have uh, to catch that insider threat or that malicious actor uh, that may be attacking your information systems. Privileged users, IA responsibilities, and then the smartphones and tablets. As you see, we're starting to repeat some of our titles here um, at, from one category to the next, um, and that's intended. Some of these tools are really across the spectrum. They have different modules. Um, what I would say is when you're looking at this training, you know, don't think that you have to take the entire training block. If you get in and you only got, you know, you only got something out of 50% of the course, then that makes me happy as a cybersecurity curriculum manager here at CDSE because you're getting something out of the course. And that goes, that goes along with all of our products that here we're talking about today is that, you know, don't, don't look at the title and say, you know what, that title isn't for me. Go to the web page, uh, you know, click on the title, read the description because there might be some nugget in there uh, that really provides value to your day-to-day -day job. All right, next poll. Have you ever implemented a cyber incident response action? Now I'm going to talk about cyber incidents for a minute. Well, let's call this um, dealing with a data spill. Um, call it dealing with a, maybe a virus that got on a computer. Um, there's a lot of different cyber incidents um, out there that happen on a pretty regular basis, unfortunately. Um, but when you're thinking about this, you know you may not realize that you're involved in a cyber incident. Um, but you are, you know, from a, let's say if you're a security, a regular security professional or you're even a facility security officer, you're involved in that cyber incident because it's, it's happening at your facility and you need to know what type of cleanup actions are being taken place uh, to um, quarantine and then, you know, further make sure that that information is secure. Um, oftentimes what happens is that, uh, you know, our IT personnel are very good and they say, hey, we've got it covered, it's good. 
but what happens is they forget something on the other side, which is more traditional uh, security responsibilities like uh, destroying the hard drive or disposition of the media uh, that was affected with a data spill. Maybe they're not disposition of media professionals, but guess what? You are. So you need to help them out and you need to know uh, what those plans are and you need to work together because that's the best way to deal uh, with a cyber incident that comes up. Some of our incident response uh, training is here. Uh, the one here at the top is Windows Server 2003 Incident Preparation and Response. This actually uh, is a pretty in-depth course when it comes to Windows environments, how to prepare for incidents and how to respond. And it also gets into some of the uh, different uh, forensic law enforcement type uh, things that you should and, and can't do essentially if you're trying to preserve evidence um, for further investigation. The next two we've, we've talked about, uh, DDA, DOD IDS analysis. Uh, the fourth one on that list, though, unauthorized disclosure of classified information. In this course, um, you may recognize it if you've taken some of our information security courses. Uh, this is not a, uh, an inherently cyber course. What it is is a course that talks about um, you know, disclosing unauthorized disclosure of classified information, whether it be you know, a fax, whether it be uh, giving a file to someone, or sending an email, creating CDs. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to disclose classified information improperly. I mean, I would encourage that if you haven't taken that class already, or that course already, that you look into that because it is not a long course, and it provides a lot of additional detail um, beyond just the data spill mindset. Speaking of data spills, we just released a new short um, roughly about 60 days ago um, which talks about uh, data spills and it walks you through the steps that you should uh, go through if you do, do in fact have a data spill. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that it has uh, both guidance uh, for industry as well as uh, the Department of Defense in there. So it can be of value to a pretty large audience. Some of the alternate platform devices smartphones and tablets, portable electronic devices. Uh, this again, if you're getting into uh, smartphones and you're, you're introducing those types of devices, whether it's on your unclassified network or it's on your classified network, you need to make sure that you know uh, what information is out there. You need to make sure that your users are educated, that your system administrators are educated. and if you're educated, then you can, of course, educate your senior leadership as well to say, hey, maybe, you know, maybe you're going and buying these thousand smart devices isn't the best idea right now. Let's do it a little bit differently. Poll number seven, have you ever used CDSE's Cybersecurity Toolkit? All right, I, I see we're split about 60-30 uh, there, 65-35. All right, with 65% of you saying no. Um, I would hope maybe you haven't used it, but you've at least gone out there and, and looked at it and reviewed the offerings. If you haven't, I would encourage you to do that. Um, there's quite a few offerings out there, whether it's best practices, uh, templates, policy, uh, regarding things like cloud computing, supply chain risk management, certification and accreditation, um, data spills, incident response, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and it's a really great resource. It's easy to get to. It's all in one place. And I would encourage you to you know, take a look at that uh, when you get a chance. Additionally, other than just the cybersecurity toolkit out there, we have one for information system security managers. Um, this toolkit uh, really focuses more on the certification and accreditation uh, when it comes to best practices, policies, templates, um, process guides, that kind of thing. And of course, when you're in these toolkits, um, if there's something missing or you realize that uh, maybe something isn't quite right, please let us know um, because these toolkits are updated all the time and we try to keep them as relevant as possible. As again, with toolkits, if they're not kept relevant, then people won't use them. All right, next poll is how many CDSE cybersecurity webinars have you attended? I'll give you a hint. Uh, this is actually the fifth webinar that we're conducting today. So if you've attended four or more, I really appreciate you uh, sticking with us uh, through the long haul here. I see it's kind of split, uh, you know, 25% in each column. 
sometimes a webinar may not apply. I understand that. Uh, but uh, as we try to put more and more of these webinars out, we want to make sure that uh, you know maybe you only you only need to go to one, uh, but that there are opportunity and additional topics of interest. Um, and of course, you can let us know that during the feedback survey later. That if you have an additional topic of interest and we don't have it covered, let us know. And if you miss a chance, you can always contact us later down the road and say, hey, this topic would be really great uh, for a webinar. So the archive cybersecurity webinars that we have, Cyber Insider Threat, uh, Information Security Continuous Monitoring, the Risk Management Framework Overview, uh, which is uh, similar to the Risk Management uh, Framework course, but it's in a webinar format and it's uh, a lot less, or it's less intensive, let's put it that way. The top 20 critical security controls, as well as trusted download, and they can all be accessed uh, through the archives um, on our website mm -hmm. at any time. All right, last poll here. Uh, could you select for us your role in the organization? And uh, the reason that we're asking this is we want to understand, uh, you know, who's attending our webinars and how better to uh, provide you with uh, training and update training uh, to give you the best tools possible. So I'm seeing a lot of facility security officers, uh, some regular security officers, uh, you know, some others, um, not a whole lot of network administrators, a few ISSMs and ISSOs. That's about, that's about what we expect. And of course, you know, like I said, please use those, uh, you know, those feedback forms whenever it's whenever possible, whether it's at the end of this webinar or it's at, you know, other training. We want to make sure that uh, we're hearing from you on what we need. So thank you for filling that out. All right. There is one question that I see here. Uh, the question is, can anyone take these CDSC cybersecurity webinars? Absolutely. Anyone can take the webinars. All you have to do is go to our archive webinar pe page, uh, click on the title, and, uh, and away you go. And not, not to mention, uh, you know, are there only, there's not just cybersecurity archive webinars. There's information security webinars, physical security webinars, um, special access webinars. Uh, I would encourage you to go out to our webinars page and, and get through uh, some of the, the other selections there, you might find something that you really like. All right, we have another question that talks about um, the possibility of another course replacing uh, the discontinued instructor-led course that we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the class, or the beginning of the webinar, titled Information Security, System Security in the NIST. Um, at this time, because of where we are with policy and pending changes uh, due to the risk management framework, and uh, conforming change to, to the, uh, NISP, the NISPOM, uh, there's not a plan today, uh, but we are going to reevaluate as the policy comes up to make sure that we are uh, providing uh, you with enough tools so that you can do your job. All right, the next question I see here is, uh, if someone is looking for technology control officer training, uh, would we recommend that you uh, person look at the ISSM training? Well, technology control officer could mean a, a lot of different things in a lot of different organizations. Um, but if they're in charge of uh, securing technology, uh, especially when it comes to safeguarding uh, classified information in the uh, NISP, I would absolutely uh, encourage them to at least take a look at um, the ISSM training um, and maybe they'll, they'll find what they need and, you know, depending on their specific role, they might not. But I would encourage you to at least go out there and look at that. Any other questions? All right, here's another one. So it's asking if we could briefly go into the details of the Cyber Awareness Challenge for the Intel community. Um, they, as you noticed in the cybersecurity awareness slide, there are, were actually two cyber awareness challenge uh, courses, one uh, for standard DOD and the other is for the intelligence community. Uh, the intelligence community has uh, different requirements uh, based on their programs, so that course uh, covers a couple different uh, variations that you wouldn't find in the normal collateral classified information kind of cyber. 
So that's all it is. It's just a couple of different uh, special variations in regards to their own uh, requirements. Any other questions? All right. Well, uh, I'd like to say, uh, sincerely say thank you for attending the webinar today and especially for providing uh, those poll responses because we're going to be able to um, you know, we're going to be able to take that information and really turn it into, uh, you know, some good training for you over this, uh, this next calendar year, 2015. Um, the last thing I'd ask is if there is uh, another additional question or comment, please use the email address. Send us, send us comments. Send us feedback. Um, and, of course, if you could snag our webinar feedback before you leave, uh, that would be fantastic. All right, for uh, CDSC's cybersecurity team today, thank you very much.